Welcome back to the channel. I'm here in the S4HANA GUI screen and we will first create two new assets via transaction AS01. Afterwards, we will post values to one asset and transfer the values to another asset. So, first of all, provide the asset class, company code, and if you would like to create multiple assets at once, you could say here two, three, and so on. For now, we'll leave it as is. Hit on enter. Now provide a description. Let's say test asset. I won't go into detail about all the fields. As I've explained you this in another session, I will leave you the link in the description of this video. However, as you can see, amongst others, the account determination was derived from our asset class over here. We can go into the time dependent tab and over here we must provide a cost center at least. But this also depends on your system. So it could also be that you need to provide an internal order or any of the other parameters over here. That's already it. Let's save the first asset. You can see an asset number was created. We will save this number, so copy it, and then we will create another asset. Hit on enter, provide a description. We will call it test asset 4. On the time dependent data, we will utilize the same cost center. And then that's it. Let's click on save. So far, we created two assets asset 200,018 and 200,019. Now it's time to post some values to the first asset before we transfer the values to the other asset. So we go to slash n for now. And let me show you how you can post. You can do so via accounting, then go to fixed assets, go to posting, and then go to acquisition. And here you can see there are many different ways how we can acquire an asset. So for now we will say ABZON. This is also the transaction code. Acquisition with automatic offsetting entry. Double click. We will take the first asset we created. And then let's scroll down a bit. You can see we have three different tabs. Transaction data, additional details, and notes. Let's start with the transaction data. Over here you have an area selection, so you could actually post values to this asset either for all of your accounting principles or you can even restrict the accounting principle or even depreciation area. Those values should be posted too. So here in the search help you can see I could select an accounting principle and then the values will only be posted in this accounting principle. The same also counts over here for the depreciation area. So far so good. Let's scroll down a bit. We need to provide a document date as well as the posting date and also the asset value date. So this date here is quite important as it the key factor in determining our depreciation start date. Then we need to post an amount, let's say 10,000 and that's it. Let's scroll up a bit. Here in the additional details section, you would have the chance to also provide a deviating document type. However, this is normally not necessary as the document type is normally derived automatically by the system. The same also counts for the offsetting account. We could manually state here an offsetting account that should be used. However, if you do not use any, then the system will derive one automatically. Then you have some special indicators like transaction type, trading number, and also some reference information. In the notes section, you could provide some notes. For now, this is fine. We can click on simulate. And over here, you can see how the acquisition would be posted. So. Of course, we have here our asset reconciliation account and on the other hand, we have the clearing account. So we can click on post. The system now posted one document per ledger, as you can see, like that. So far, so good. Let's now transfer our values from this asset to our other asset. So we go to slash n, a, b, u, m, n. This is the transfer within a company code. So we provide our source asset the one we just posted the values to. Then over here, as always, we could restrict for accounting principle or depreciation area, but for now we leave it as is. We need to provide our posting date, document date, and asset value date. And then over here we can say either we want to transfer to an existing asset or we want to transfer the values to a new asset. So we could actually create a new asset and transfer the values to this asset in just one step. However, we created the other asset beforehand. So I will insert a number right now. The number was 200,019 and don't enter. That's basically it. We have some more sections, additional details. This one you have seen before. However, you can see here one more indicator called transfer method. It's set to four. Let's inspect the search help. Four is already the right one. Transfer within a company code. There are also other methods that could be used, but for now, we will leave it as is. Then you have another section called partial transfer because we have also the option to only transfer a partial amount of the total value of our asset 200,018. So that for instance, of the 10,000 we posted before to the asset 200,018, we could say that 2,000 should go to the new asset. So the new asset receives 2,000 and the old asset has a remaining value of 8,000. However, if we do not state anything over here, then the system will think that we want to transfer the whole amount. This is what we are going to do right now. So we can click on simulate and here you can see the postings. So we will take 10,000 from our asset 200,018 and transfer the 10,000 to our asset 200,019. That's good. We can click on post. You can see two documents were generated. This is because we posted in all the ledgers. So this is fine. Now let's inspect the assets. 
Let's go to slash nsa03. We will first go to the former asset. So insert a number and then click on asset values. And over here in the current year, you can see no values are stated because there is a transaction. You can see there's a retirement transfer that was carried out by transferring all the amounts to the new asset. On the other hand, if we take a look into the other asset, let's go back to 2019, then click on asset values. You can now see this new asset has some values assigned to it. And those values stem from the acquisition transfer from the other asset. So the 10,000 we transferred from the asset to 100,018. Last but not least, let's go back into the asset. So to 100,018. Over here in the upper corner, we click on asset, block delete. And actually the block was already carried out by the system because we transferred all the amounts. If we click on the delete indicator and on delete, the system will hinder us from deleting this asset. It says deleting not possible. The asset has already values. This is that even though we transferred all the values from the asset to 100,018, to the asset 200,019. Initially, values were posted to our asset 200,018. And the system remembers itself of this fact. So, because there were values historically, the system won't allow us to delete this asset. So in the end, all we can do is block the asset. Okay, this marks the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If so, then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. See you next time.